let me move to uh, why we're back here in, in uh, East Palestine. Um, Fran and I have been here a number of times. Uh, we thought, frankly, it was time to, to come back. We wanted to start with this community meeting that, that goes on, uh, and we're really representatives of the community come together to solve problems and to talk about what, what issues that uh, they might have. So today we will go from here to the school. Uh, we have visited the school before. One of the first places we stopped uh, right after the, the accident uh, was, was the school. And so we want to go back to the school. We want to see what's going on. Some of the science classes are how EPA is, is working uh, with the school today uh, on a project. We want to take a look at that. Uh, we're also going to have the opportunity just to really look at different sites uh, in, in the community and really kind of get a report from people as far as what, you know, what they're seeing and what uh, uh, any challenges that remain. Uh, we committed when, we, uh, when this uh, tragedy started uh, that we were not only here for a few days, we were going to be here uh, and stay here. Uh, the clinic uh, that was started, uh, we put, I think, about a million and a half dollars in it from the Ohio Department of Public Health uh, to really get the jump started. Um, the clinic is, is moving forward. We think that's a great asset for the community, and we believe that we'll be here um, you know, for many, many, many years serving the people of the community. Um, and again, the um, announcement uh, we have in regard to the trucks for the village, uh, we're putting $150,000 into that. Uh, that coupled with the federal dollars uh, will buy a couple trucks, uh, new trucks. It will also uh, buy a drone, and I think the village will put some money in it as well. But uh, we, we took care of at least some of the match uh, required by uh, the federal law. Uh, for the village, at the, as I said, at the rate of $150,000. So happy to take any uh, any questions on uh, whatever can, you want to talk about. Can you talk a little bit about what you heard in there and, yeah. if anything, what your concerns coming away from that are? Well, as you know, this is a group that has met for some time. They meet regularly. They're meeting weekly and now it's bi-weekly. Um, and it's really representatives from different segments of the community. They're all people who touch a lot of people in the community. Um, and so, you know, I want, frankly, to meet with them just to see what they are hearing. Um, uh, you know, no real surprises today. Uh, I think, you know, what, they, what I come away from the meeting is with, uh, you know, this impression uh, that things are moving forward. Uh, I think uh, the one concern that was expressed uh, when I asked, what are the people telling you? Uh, it's the same thing that we've heard for a number of months, and that is that most people feel they're doing well, but uh, the concern is what happens in the long run, uh, particularly in the long run from a medical point of view. And that's a very uh, legitimate uh, concern. Uh, you know, we fully understand that, and what we can do uh, is as these studies are going on, these studies need to be based not only on what scientists want, but they also need to be based on what people in the community want. So when people have questions, the studies should be aimed at trying to answer the questions. And that will be something that should continue, uh, you know, well, well in, into the future. I would expect that, you know, that it, that it would. So. Are, you, are you concerned, as you people have heard, the Youngstown media hears all the time, there's a lack of trust. And it goes to the medical issues, it goes to the cleanup issues. How do you tell these people over and over to convince them that you're doing the work, it's moving along? I think the most important thing is what we've, we've tried to do, uh, and, but we need to continue to do. And that is literally show people what we're doing. I mean, one of the things that was talked about in there a moment ago uh, you know, one of the people in the meeting said it was great to go out and see what you all are doing in the creek, you know, uh, the, the stream. You showed us exactly what you're doing. So, uh, look, we don't know. The average person, I don't know everything the EPA does or how they do it, um, you know, or any other department. So the more people can see, I mean, it's their community. You know, they live here. So uh, when experts come in and do studies or do uh, testing, 
you know, they need to be able to see, the people of the community need to be able to see exactly what they're doing and explain in, in terms that the layperson like me can understand. And so the more we can do that, uh, the more the agencies and departments that can do that, uh, you know, the, the better it is. And so transparency is the key. Um, you know, nothing hidden, everything open. Uh, will people continue to have doubts? Will they have concerns? Sure. They're, they're gonna, you know, this is, hum this is human nature. And our job is to you know, be as transparent as we can, show them what we're doing, and if there are questions, you know, try to answer those questions and to be available to answer the questions. Look, this community suffered huge trauma. Uh, very few villages in the state of Ohio ever suffered trauma uh, like the, the people here have. Uh, so, you know, this is going to take a long time to, to completely heal. But, um, you know, the good news from, from the meeting we had and the conversations I've had uh, is that, you know, people are going about their lives um, and, you know, things are, things are moving forward. And that's what's, uh, you know, that's obvious, obviously what we want for this, for this community and the people who live in East Palestine. With the long-term health concerns, is a public health emergency still something that you're advocating for? Look, you know, how we label things I don't think is as important as what we do. And, and so, you know, we constantly are looking at what we're doing and we're listening to what people are saying and trying to react and give them what, what they want. And so we're going we're to continue to do that. Whatever we want to label this, I, I think the key is, is that that dialogue and that conversation just continuing. Anybody with, else? With all of the numbers being given to assure residents that their numbers are coming back safety, if they're not listening to the numbers, how do you still assure people, signs aside, that they are safe living in their community? I think we continue to give them the numbers. We continue to try to explain the numbers. Uh, but some of this just takes time. I mean, you know, trauma, you know, if you lived here, you were traumatized in some way. And trauma, we know, it just takes time. And so we can only do so much as far as provide information, but we have to continue to do that. And we can't just walk away. We have to continue to do that, and we're going to continue to do that.